This is your Bomb Wednesday sermon. I am Naima Cochran, your senior pastor of music sermon. And with me, are you drinking Moscato, Maji? Like, don't, don't, oh, don't I, was call about me. To, I was about to say. Um, you just trying to call me a hood rat? A like, little bit. I not some. <laughs> And with me, pouring his libations, is our director of helps ministry, the great Karin J. Phillips. Hi, Karin. What are you What are you drinking today, Karin? A, a fine Griffon Bianco. Um, okay. Organic Italian, and it's quite wonderful. Is an organic wine really necessary? That's what Trader Joe's put on the damn label. So look, I feel like uh, I need to know my shit was like properly processed. Look, but if it tastes good, Carter Joe's is the best place ever. It is. It's very cheap. That's why the lines are so long. It, it's amazing. Like it's it's my favorite place to go to in the world. Right. Right. It's just all sorts of wine, champagne, mm-hmm. liquors, good little snacks. You just can't do real gross shopping there. It's no. like the supplemental it, store. Yeah, like I go there store. first, and then I go to the real grocery store. Right. Like, you can only pick up, like, a accoutrement. You can't pick up, like, the real stuff there. Um, Before we get into today's show, because we have a couple things we're going to talk about. Y'all know how I do. I'll forget um, to do the housekeeping. I just want, I just, first of all, I want to give a shout out to the Count the Ding Super Squad all together. We were all on text message. Today It's feeling like a family. Uh, I put everybody on mute. I'm not going to lie, because my phone was that's hot fine, the other day. That's fine. I, I had to dip in, dip out, dip in, dip Anytime out. Anytime you got more than three people in a text chat, you really need to just put the whole joint on mute and just take a look, glance over periodically. But um, as I've mentioned every week, we have a wide array of programming for your pleasure and for your interest and, and for your distraction for your preoccupation, whatever you may need, um, on both the main Count the Dean's feed and on the bomb feed, which is Black Opinions Matter, motherfucker, in case you've forgotten what it stands for, um, which includes on Mondays, the Crazy Sexy Cool podcast. Go um, ahead. Um, shout, shout out to them. Their latest episode, they talk about skirting. I need to go listen to that. <laughs> And on Tuesday, the OG show with the fellas. Wednesdays, you got us. Thursdays, you got Woke Bro Wise. And on Fridays, you got Growing Up the Same with Trayvon. Listen, if you still don't get what you need out of all of that, you can subscribe to our Patreon and get some original content. But also remember, we encourage you to follow all of us in, in addition to liking, subscribing, and all that good stuff. And watching, because once again, Karn has his shoulders out. His arms out. And y'all if are missing Michael, this. If Michael B. Jordan oh, Lord. can thirst trap for votes, then hey. look. I'm just saying. Let me go ahead and, and use I'm just like saying. my God-given talents for the so, betterment of <laughs> our uh, podcast network yes. and for democracy. There we go. So you can search, so you can search for Count the Dings on YouTube and actually watch us as we're taping this. Um, I want to give a shout out to everybody who's been out there standing in. Austin Tages lines to vote on this week, um, to early vote. Uh, you guys are heroes, but also we should not be standing in 11 hour long lines on. We should be standing 11 minute long lines. Um, in 2020 to cast a vote, right? We should not. That is, that is voter suppression. It is voter disenfranchisement. Be very, very clear about what is happening. And it's happening because part of the Voting Rights Act has already been rolled back. So, and they can also they can do shenanigans because th- this country was founded on voting being a sham. Given that only six percent of people voted in the first presidential election, because only white men who owned land could actually vote. And Correct. I saw a tweet a couple of weeks ago from this woman in Canada who was just like, "I don't understand you guys in America." Basically, I'm paraphrasing because she was like. We don't even have voter registration. Well, because, in- like you said, register the, the parameters of registering to vote itself is meant to be exclusionary. Absolutely. But you shouldn't even have to register. You should just walk in, tell exactly. them your name, and vote. And go home. It's meant to be exclusionary. And, and get your sticker. Exactly. Um, and then secondly, um, oh, I want to give a really brief shout out. So, all right. I was talking to a friend of mine uh, from high school recently. And a conversation we were having prompted me 
to go back. Actually, I was talking to somebody I dated in high school. I'll keep it a buck. I was talking to somebody I dated in high school. about the ass. What we had of, it. We had this? not spoken in quite some time, and our conversation prompted me to go pull out my journals. I kept immaculate journals all through high school until it was like all. Moses? So not like, definitely not like, I definitely don't want to be compared to Moesha, but I guess just in terms of the the act of writing in a journal. Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, but I kept almost daily freshman year through junior year. And then like the first semester of my senior year was a little more sporadic, but I was going to look and see what I had said about him because we were talking about how we in the course of our relationship and stuff. But I went back, so I've had these journals obviously forever. And I've gone back and flipped through them occasionally, but I actually started going back and reading through them. And like, yo. You was fast? <sighs> you a fast tail little girl? Dating in high school is really funny. So like, first of all, there's a couple of relationships that I would have sworn lasted a really long time and the business was like two months. Or, <laughs> or they were like, two. there was like that, like, because, you know, first of all, you had those parameters of, of dating in high school, which was like, because nobody actually called it dating. It was it's talking. Me, it's talking. So there was the levels, right? Like, you could be on the phone just getting to know each other, at, but not be talking. Yeah. Then there was talking. Then you talking. Then, then it's go together. together. Then you go together, yeah. right? So it's That's reading. That's how it goes. That's I, how we, I, it still goes this way right now at 36. <laughs> See, like, for no, me now. we just talking. So for me now, it goes like, you know, we're just hanging out to we're dating, to we're in a relationship. But that's what it's like, the parallels. But it was so funny that, to that's read. That's the problem with dating. We don't, we, we broke the mold. Mm. But it was so it's funny to read talking, stuff. Talking, we go together. To read stuff like, you know, such and such called me and said he heard I was I was with blah blah blah. And I was like, we don't even talk. You know, like just that <laughs> just that kind of stuff. And I don't talk to her. Right. Be like, she we just, I mean, we cool. We don't even talk. Not we definitely don't go together. So and so there oh, was that was always my line. I'm like, that ain't even your boyfriend. Y'all just talking. Y'all just talking. In there. Oh my In god. There. It was so In much. There. So there was that that surprised me because there would be that phase of like the pre-talking, then the talking, then the going together, then the post, like whatever dramatic, especially if y'all at different schools and whatnot, there was always like, it wasn't just over. Like there was always like a lot of back and forth and people on three ways and you had to go over to their game. And so like, it was always a whole thing. And the second thing was that. It's the same way now, though, after the after the yes. relationship is over. Y'all the still, there's still four to six weeks of yes. XX, which is actually <laughs> my favorite just part a, of a relationship. A, just a post-mortem, like, whatever, right. Not, nothing's better Minimum. than XX, though. But it, wait, yes, it is. But, yeah, it's up there. XX is great. And then, I'm not even going to, I'm not even going to get into that. And then. Wait, take your head, yes. Blink twice. Nope. No, no, no. And then, because it can also be so dangerous. Um, That's what makes it so good. No, no, we can't encourage that. Sorry, y'all. We're yes, not encouraging. We're not I advocating. Am. We're not Look, advocating for 2020 XX. has taught us the YOLO, because y'all. This is true. But, but don't get dragged back into some shit you don't need to be dragged hey, back into hey, either. Hey, send them risky texts. Tell, tell them I told you to do it. Send the them. opinions of Karin J. Phillips do not reflect. Find <laughs> <laughs> them DMs. Uh, but the other thing... Especially that, on LinkedIn. The other thing that I miss is that if the person didn't go to your school, every single person I talked to or went with... I can't believe I'm saying... Those phrases don't even sound right anymore. I talked to or went with they who do. didn't go to my school, it was on some like... I met this person and one of my friends got with their friends or my friend was was talking to this person and the guy got with it. Like, it was all friend groups. It was all of it was friend groups. Yeah, you get a little messy. So you got to have one at each school. And then you got to have your friends at I the tried school. that in one of these journals and Keep it was messy as food. hell. But it sounds that like was exactly what the problem skills aren't where they need to I'm be. I'm just, now. I'm shouting out. Just shout out to Teenage Nine. She was doing a lot. God bless her. God bless her. She was popular as hell. Oh boy. Popular mm. girl. Anyway, Bastard. moving on. Moving on. <laughs> um, I'm going to turn this first part over to you, Karin. Uh, LeBron did it again. Lakers National Championships. What, national Championships. Like national Champions. Whatever. <laughs> In, NBA Final Champions. Whatever. And Red Cup. Uh, yeah, man, look, they pulled it off, and which is to date 
the most strenuous, no one's jumped through this many hurdles ever to win an NBA championship, given I wrote about this and I was just listing all the things that happened to the Lakers. Uh, Kobe, the season stopping, Mm -hmm. uh, a global pandemic, living in a bubble for over, what, 90-some days, 100-some days. The strike. Uh, Racial and social unrest. They they went on a strike for like yeah. three days, um, and in between that, the pandemic and all of that, like they stopped playing basketball for three and a half months, right? And then had to start all over again. Um, this team went through so much this year uh, on, on so many different levels, and for them to pull it off, I mean, this was the bubble was a a basketball fans like just the best experience ever. If you're really? like, if you're a casual basketball fan or only mm-hmm. like tune in the sports for the big events, then I can understand like why this wasn't for you. And you talk about all this other stuff and all these. Well, other is it because it was just now. solely concentrated on the game and not yeah, like fan shots was, and all the extra it, shit? It, it was nobody on the front row who was mm-hmm. there. It was no home and away, no flying, no mm-hmm. home court advantage. No, nah, this was just about it's us. We locked in this gym. Right. <laughs> Made the best team win which reminds you of like AAU tournaments and in summer leagues or summer so cases when you're playing in high school or just pick up where mm-hmm. look, it, it, depending on where you're from, or where you are, you know, there are certain gyms or certain places that where, you know, if you play pickup, if you lose, it's two hours until next. Right. And those are like the best atmospheres and places to play because it's just like, no one wants to lose because what, if you lose, you might as well just go home. Right. Because if y'all play at seven, y'all take this. It's going to be nine thirty for y'all to get back on the court. So right. Right. If you lose, you just might as well go home. And those, that's when it really gets fun. It's not really fun if you lose. It's fun if you winning because it's 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 a lot of male ego. It's a lot of machismo. It's a it's a lot of hostility. Mm. And that is when sports is the, the fun. That's, when, that's what sports is yeah, fun. Like, <laughs> it's fun to me when it's not fun. Right. That's when I'm having fun. When it is hostile. As a fan, that's when it's good to you. Oh, just eat. No, it, playing. When I used okay. to play, like, I, I, I hated playing at home. Mm-hmm. In our home gym. Like, I love road games because it was like, we going in your gym, we about to give you this L, and I'm about to show in front of your girls <laughs> at your school. Like, I right. love road games. Home, I was just like, yeah, it's whatever, it's cool. But yeah, so a situation like the bubble was, was if you are a true basketball fan or, like, hyper-competitive, like, this was the best thing ever. Um, right. but, you know, who knows what next season will look like. They don't know when they're starting next season. But for what it was, you know, I tip my hat off to the NBA. I had to write an apology column because I thought this was a stupid idea in March. Mm-hmm. I was like, just, just go ahead and cancel the season. But they did it. And the most impressive thing is that they did this with zero positive tests. Right. Which is a which proves that isolating works. Yes. And if you have zero tolerance rules. You can actually make this happen. So yep. they did it. But so they were to... also in a literal bubble. So there's also that. Yeah, um, but they were in a literal bubble yeah, and yeah. ground zero for COVID because Florida was buck wild when they went. Exactly. Went. Now ground um, zero is at the White House. So yeah. Was... But I also wanted to point out so when COVID first happened and the NBA had to had to suspend the season. I didn't think it, like, before they announced the bubble, I didn't think it was coming back. And the first thing that really broke my heart was, like, fuck, LeBron had to, LeBron had to get them to a to a championship this week, this year, because of Kobe, right? Mm-hmm. And when I, when they first won, I almost forgot that Kobe it's died this year. It's been that long. It's been, it's felt like that long. So I'm really happy. Um, first of all, that, like, I guess I, I'm assuming that now even the the hardest core Laker fan is able to accept LeBron as a Laker, I would think. Um, you know, that he solidified his place with the team, that he's proven that, you know, he can do this in multiple places. But also just like as fucked up as his year has been, there's no other way this could have gone, you know, yeah. to me. 
and and so this is gonna this is gonna sound like a lot, but just but just stay with me. In 2016, right, we had a whole bunch of sports upsets that year. Yep. And everyone I saw made me more afraid of the outcome of the election. <laughs> Because I was like, if all this shit is going left, if those if all this, go three, I was like, <laughs> yeah, I was like, if all this, because also like, didn't the socks win the, win the pennant? That, like, it was like all kind of crazy, like one in a million chance things happening. So this actually made me feel like, oh, maybe order is going to be restored. I don't want to get too excited, but literally that was like, I remember in 16 being like, if I was a gambling person, it looked like Trump winning to me. And yeah, so this makes me feel like maybe the universe is right in itself. Let's pray. We'll pray. Um, so one of, you know, speaking of Trump and elections, um, <laughs> last week, the de- last Wednesday was the debate a week ago by the time you guys listen. And it was um, a lot of Kamala basically uh you guys all a live shot of what every black woman looks like in a corporate meeting all the time but um (laughs) (laughs) like all the time but also like you know I I talked last week about how the timing of certain things that have been happening with the with this administration and COVID is almost too too on the nose like nobody could write it nobody could make it up similarly so when you got super Christian, but also super creepy um, robot looking Pence sitting there with his perfect white, not even gray, like white hair, and a fly, just a light on shout the hair. Out, shout out to Flasha. Shout out to Flasha. And was there for like a whole like two minutes, <laughs> to, like chilling, just there. Posted up like a mailbox. That was like more, that was, a, I felt like that was a more powerful illustration than literally, that was more powerful than literally anything he could have said the whole time. Because <laughs> there's no way you don't see that happen and something in your head clicked to distaste, evil, distrust, like signs from, signs from God, zombies, like something, right? Like something White where, walkers. <laughs> white walkers, you know, um, Something that does not paint Pence in a favorable light, basically. It came off as like a normal human would just move or or do yeah, something. Some... And it, it it reminded me of something I saw on social media, I think a week ago. And it was like, have you noticed that like the White House doesn't feel like people live there anymore since this administration has been there. And it was all these pictures of like Obama administration, both Bushes, the Clintons of just like the president having downtown downtime in jeans. Yeah. Just chilling a dog with the lives kids. There. Yeah. They're having like concerts of people over. They're laughing there in the Rose garden dressed down, maybe catching mm-hmm. a ball game or something. And it was just like, non, nah, like they have treated this place as a place to hold rallies and everyone's in a shirt and tie and a suit no, it's every a palace. day. It's like, they it treat it like a palace. Yeah, it doesn't feel like, the, and it was like, regardless of party, like it just felt a certain way. There was a certain yeah. reference and it was like, it, it doesn't feel like that anymore. So then it to doesn't. see that, you know, Flash On showed up like that. Yeah. It, it, but it, also it, like, it, like you said, a normal person with a brush. So I, so I hate fly, like I hate flies. The, the sound, dis- even the sound of them. Disgusting. Yes, I and maybe I'm sensitive to the sound of them because I'm from the south or something. But like, I can't no fly. Like a, a little fruit fly can't even get near me without my that bitch and being all. So what you're saying, if you was on the big stage and you heard a cicada, like you would have took off running. <laughs> no, I would have been looking for that bitch to hit it. Like, it's not going to be chilling in my head. That What I'm saying is it wouldn't have been chilling in my head. That's what I'm saying. There's no way, unless that fly dropped down from the fucking ceiling, there's no way that fly goes past my ear and gets to my head without me doing... And maybe he didn't because it was a debate and he didn't want to look like he was bugging out. But I feel like there's a little something. You could have done something. To not have a fly on your head for two minutes. You could have did a quick jerk like you heard somebody yeah, on, just on do stop, a little say, something. say something to you or something. But you know, no. you know, uh Queen Kamala handled it and handled herself like well. we thought she would. 
And as I posted, it was the probate hair for me. Cause she very much probate hair. That was very like, much probate hair. That was, meant, like, that was meant for that good flip. She <laughs> was about to set out. It's that a serious that. matter. And I was like, what's that up, That was meant for them good flips. <laughs> yeah. What's happening? That was meant for them good head flips. Um, for those who don't know what probate hair is, because I, I remember we got to define it. So, <laughs> as we were going to talk about last week, and we still will talk about in the future, Kamala is a member of one of the, the what we call the Divine Non-Black Greek uh, Letter Organizations, a member of Cal Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, which is the first Black sorority, um, which was founded on Howard's campus. And she, what we call probate hair is... Sorry, fire alarm. Um, <laughs> I'm dropping roll. It's Stop a lot happening. Um, basically, after you've been online, after you've been pledging, because one difference, and this is for our non-Black listeners, one difference between um, white Greek letter organizations and Black Greek letter organizations is that Black Greek letter organizations no longer pledge above ground. So, or or actually, technically, technically, we don't pledge. But, well, no, when Kamala pledged, it still would have been an above ground line. So when Kamala pledged, it would have been above ground. So, but basically while you're pledging, you're not supposed to look cute and fly and, you know, you're supposed to look like you're going through something. People be looking so, like death. <laughs> <laughs> so. Smelling like death. <laughs> be dressed, you all, you have, you and the whole line has, they're supposed to dress alike. Like it's a lot. They don't see them at all. They don't eat. (laughs) Especially in the time of Kamala pledging. If you've ever seen school days, that's like the era of when Kamala would have pledged. And, um, so people limp in the class. (laughs) When you finally have your probate, which is your coming out, which is your like introduction to the, the school community as a member of this organization, because you've crossed over, um, your pledge period is over. You know, you get the hair done. You got some nice, you know, you got you got your little outfit together for your show. So that's why we call what Kamala has probate hair. Because that's that freshly done hair that was, that's that ready was, to swing that French press. back and forth. Yeah. <laughs> She's that hair ready. was done done. Um, so now uh, I want to say there was supposed to be another presidential debate tomorrow, but it's obviously canceled because even though Donald Trump is back on the campaign circuit, and now, as of today, sick, sick his doctor, sick as hell. yeah, as of today, his doctor says he's immune. We don't believe okay. them. Okay. We don't believe them. You need more. People. Need all the more people. It hasn't. Has it, it hasn't even been two weeks. It hasn't even been a full fourteen days since he was. It ain't been Tony Braxton seven whole days. <laughs> <laughs> right. Not- he just Hell. outside. He outside dancing a macho man. Like, what is so wrong with you? You're you, you telling me that a, a, a overweight person that doesn't work out in the East McDonald's is, is over COVID that fast. So one but thing he out, here, he out here shaking his ass to the village people during I the campaign. Definitely, not, I not definitely understand it, what the song is about. There's also that. Um, I definitely believe he's still contagious, but something a nurse said stuck with me, and she was like, Part of the reason that it's possible Donald Trump has recovered already is because when he had his first sign of symptoms, we threw, like, the medical staff threw everything at him that they usually give to somebody who's on their last leg, right? Plus some treatments that are unavailable to the average person. So your president, before he was even possibly for sick, got everything that we can't even give to all the people who need it because he has that level of, of access he, and privilege. They also didn't publicly confirm that he had it until two days after he knew right. that he had it. Right, right. And so he was who, still jumping on planes, shaking hands. Between him and Pence, I mean, y'all go, go, y'all go ahead and be super spreaders, bro. Like, who am I to stop God's plan from going forth? Who am I? Um... All right. You kind of do, but uh... <laughs> I want to get now into. So we have one more episode left of Lovecraft Country for this season, for this first season. But I'm sad. I'm sad. I am too, actually. But I want to spend a little time on this week's episode because it was phenomenal. And I know there are some people who like. The storytelling, the storytelling, um, was a too much for. I've seen people talk about it on 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 Twitter, and so I think I think actually because episode now, can two. Can we talk about that? Well, yeah. So episode two out of the so okay, let's talk about. It. So first of all, we've talked about this before. So 
the each episode serves kind of two functions. There is a through line that goes through this whole season. But also each episode is like a standalone story with an with an undercurrent of a through line that goes through the whole thing. And that through line is about Tick and his ancestral ties to uh the, the Sons of, of Adam. And the Sons of Adam. Yeah, the book of names and the Sons of Adam, right? For that starts from the very Wade's first episode. Quest to immortality. Right. So that starts from the very first episode, and that continues through the whole thing. But there's several other things happening. The first thing is that each episode explores a different um, kind of genre of storytelling. So you have sci-fi, you have action-adventure, you have um, straight horror. You have, this time we had like time travel in sci-fi. We've had Afrofuturism, right? So... It's each one has a different storytelling style, which is throwing some people off. So, like, we had one that was kind of like a, you know, that was kind of like some a Asian, Indiana we Jones some Asian sci fi. Yeah, we had some Asian sci fi. Um, we had, you know, so there's a little of everything. So, I think that, so that's throwing people off. And the other thing is, like I said, there's each episode focuses on a different character. And that sometimes, except for this one. And that, well, no, this one did too, because it was really about Montrose. So that throws people off. So you got like one that's about Hippolyta. You got one that's about Letty. You got one that's about um, Ruby. You got one that's about D. You know, and that, so that's throwing people off. But when you really, and and I think episode two lost a lot of people because there was a lot going on in episode two. I had to watch it like three times. Two was when they were at the house. After they got to the house, when they were actually at the house. When they went downstairs? When they went downstairs, when they went to the dinner, um, oh, when they did the oh, ritual, yeah, two, two, that was, was when they each favorites. had the fight. And they had the flashback but it was a thing. lot. But there was a lot. Oh no, I like it happening. And it's also not a show that you can watch and be doing anything. Else. That's like, that's that's what I want to get to. This yeah. is the two points I want to make. I am sick and tired, and I say <laughs> this as a TV head. I am sick right. and tired of people always complaining about really good TV shows. And they're just like, I can't get into it. Or I got lost here and I got lost here. It happened with Game of Thrones. It happened with House of Cards. It happens like Westworld. Westworld. It's like, no, these shows, are. is there a level of complication there? Yes. Is there a level of comprehension there? Yes. That isn't the issue. We've always had shows like that. The issue is that people in this era of streaming and Netflix where you can binge watch, people do not know how to take in art anymore. You want to be scrolling on your phone. You want to be scrolling through IG. You want to be live tweeting while it's going on. Like, people don't know how to just shut the fuck up, sit the fuck down, (laughs) and watch the fucking TV show. And then it's the scene or look here that means so much. They miss it. And then when the reveal happens, everyone's like, oh, and they're like, I don't get it. Well, motherfucker, if you stayed right. off your phone. If you had paid attention. You would get it. And then you got to go back two, three, four, five times. And it's like. Well, I also, I hard. watch every episode of Lovecraft twice. I watch every episode of Lovecraft twice. I have to. And this time I had to actually wait a day because it was just so fucking powerful. Right. Um. So we've talked before about. Uh, Lovecraft doing like historical Easter eggs and um, wait, wait, wait. but also wait, dropping wait. I, like I, I, had, I had another point. I had, I had another oh yeah, chance. I'm sorry. Go ahead. So go ahead, sir. Go ahead, sir. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And it's bad. not that that it's also I have seen especially with Lovecraft, especially from black people. So black people, I'm talking to you. For people, this word that is highly overused and it's overused to the point that it's losing the effect and the power behind this word, which is trigger. Mm-hmm. Y'all, y'all can't be triggered by Every everything. Thing. Because if everything's trigger you, when something actually triggers you, people are just going to be like, mm, okay, everything's trigger you. Why should I take this as the important actual triggering thing that can affect you? And it's like, okay, maybe Lovecraft is too much for you. Well, then don't watch it. I don't want to see yeah. you starting hashtags and threads complaining about this show because it's too much for you. That does not mean that this show was not serving a purpose of any show right, we've right. seen before. I've seen it with um, this, uh, 
Blue people. Uh, Av- Avatar? No, Regina, Regina King. And Yaha. Blue people? What? The Watchmen. Oh, oh, Watchmen. Watchmen. People was doing this about right. the Watchmen, and I watched the Watchmen last, even though mm-hmm. people overhyped it and said it was like the greatest TV show of all time. When I finished, I was like, y'all, there's a goddamn lie, and it's nowhere close. <laughs> I was like, y'all, <laughs> black people just told it themselves and said, and told us they didn't know shit about black history. That's what it was. Right. Y'all got a black history narrative that your mamas and daddies didn't ever teach you, and that's why you love the Watchmen so much. But it's like, if, if like- everything isn't for you, that's fine. That don't mean you have to make a campaign about everything, diminishing the work and the art behind it just because you don't get it because your ass don't want to focus and stay off your phone to take it in and receive it. Well, also, I think the thing about the triggering, right, is that I see a lot of um, complaints about storytelling centered in Black trauma. And that's not the only storytelling we have, but a lot of people who say this also think lighter Black storytelling is silly, right? (laughs) So, and what I do actually love about what Lovecraft is doing is that it is framing racism and black trauma in a way to help you understand it's horrific. It is literally horrific. Like it's like, it's intentional. Right. And yes, some of these episodes, they're so evocative. Like the word isn't triggering because you ain't actually lived through the experience. Is it? It's, evoc- it's just that like, Misha it, Green it, is it, punching it, you in the face. It evokes, every scene. yeah, it evokes emotion, and like honestly, maybe we need to feel some of that shit. So, like, this is a perfect episode. So, in this episode, this episode was about time travel, and explored a couple of different time travel paradoxes. One is the grandfather paradox, meaning if you went back and accidentally changed something. You know, like, well, the theory is if you go back and kill your grandfather, it means you cease to exist, which means you could never go it's back and back kill your to grandfather. the future theory, right. which we found but out, the other though, one, Infinity yeah. Wars, isn't actually true right. because Bruce Banner broke that down in the space-time continuum. Right. I, but, I'm a, but I'm not a physicist like Bruce Banner, so I'm going to keep rocking with it. And then <laughs> the, other, the other paradox is the casual loop paradox, which is when you go back in time you affect the future that you came from, right? So it's like, Tick is part of an event that already happened in the past that he heard about in the future. So it's like, there's no origin point. There's no first time it happened. It just has been like that, he if was, that makes sense. That he was supposed to have been there in that moment with right. that back. Right, right. He was in the past, even though he just came back from the future, but whatever. So that said... Watchmen also talked about the Tulsa mass- Massacre and the Tulsa Massacre, along with just the actual existence of sundown towns, are two things I've heard people, not just white people, but black people too, say that they were unaware of, right? But even black people were unaware of the Tulsa Massacre. A lot, I'm not going to say all, but a lot of, because it's not something that's taught in history school, um, I mean, in history in school, kind of like the um, the move bombing in Philadelphia, oh. right? Like. I now, didn't know that about is a until I was a full ass adult. That, now, that is the lowest of keys. Yeah. Y'all Google that when you get a chance. It happened in 81, I about that in 2016 when I was in Philly. And I was like, right. whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm my whole African-American studies major with honors. What y'all are talking about? Right. And I was like, oh, they, they did what they were supposed to do. And kept this in Philly because that that's like, it. This they didn't even keep, not even regional, like they yeah. kept it in the city, right? Um, but anyway, so the Tulsa Massacre was in 1821. Um, and they referenced earlier in the show that. 1921. Um, 1921, sorry. They referenced it earlier in the show as saying that that's where everybody's families mm-hmm. were from and, and talking about the book of names having been lost in the fire. We you know when it happened. Um, but to be to be placed inside of that night like that was um that's never been done. It's like for people who don't understand, it's like it was like being on it's like being it's like when James Cameron put us on a Titanic no, on a no, smaller scale. You know what it's like for no. black people to be? It was for everything we've ever heard about the middle passage. And there was a mm. portal and you stepped through it and you had to experience the middle passage. Mm-hmm. That's what it was kind of like for them to go back and walk through. Well, I'm saying for them to go back, but I meant as a viewer, this was akin to, on a smaller scale, 
James Cameron doing Titanic and showing you the yeah. story of like how of who the people were and how it all unfolded yeah. and how yeah. tragic it was. You're right. Right, it right. was this, but like on a smaller scale. But fucking Michael K. Williams. Like I know that we've been talking about Journey has been doing her thing. If Yo, you come if at the king, you best not miss. If they don't give K. Williams a goddamn Michelin star, a Rob Report Award, Small Business of the Year, Teacher of the Year, motherfucking um like the key to some city. Like I need him to get every award that exists acting and otherwise because that mother, what he has been killing it this entire season. But this episode, I don't even know where he went for this episode. Like, like, I don't even know where, like, I don't even know where he was. His head, he's, his head had to be fucked up coming out of this episode because this one goes into his trauma. And that man, was traumatized through this whole episode. Like it's it's hard to believe. And I know he portrays, he always portrays like layered characters who actually do have trauma underneath, you know, the surface. But this was some other shit. And one of the most there there are two really, really key powerful moments. The first is watching um, him get beat. Huh? Watching him get beat by his dad. Watching him get beat, but also like Letitia standing with Tick's great grandmother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? As the house is on fire, and the great grandmother saying to her, When my great great grandchild is born, he will be my faith made flesh. And like, for every one of us, like any of y'all who got a shirt that says, I'm not my ancestors, I hope you felt ashamed when you heard that shit. Because mm. that's, that's, I think that's the wish that like all our great grandparents put on put on us, right? And for her to stand there while Sonia Sanchez's Catch a Fire is being recited in the background, which is another thing that this um, show does really well, is mixes in poetry and spoken word uh, with the narrative of the show and in the background of the show, but and the this, music too, and the music. But the second moment was Montrose standing at the window. Watching Letitia come down the street, watching the planes bomb the city, watching everything on fire, and well, she turning Alicia Keys, <laughs> yeah, girl on fire, and calling the names of people who got killed that night, and all of those names in Montrose's monologue were real people. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's also important to know. All of the, all of the, the, the businesses you saw on the street, including the theater. The theater is the same theater that we started in in Watchmen. Watchmen, um, and the names that he called, the stories that he talked about, they were real. That was real. Like that shit was actually real. And that was just the one thing I thought about was is like this is the second time uh, when this goes to a previous conversation about how HBO turned to the blackest network out that we've yeah. had a series on HBO reference Tulsa. And mm-hmm. references happen in reference to Dreamland Theater. And I was like, at some point, we've got to put Dreamland up there with Apollo. Because yeah. what other two black theaters have meant that much to black people? Right. One, as a place to where it, it was a springboard for all our favorite black artists and entertainers, but also just what happened to Dreamland and just all I was thinking of. You know, looking at it from the Watchmen standpoint and now with Lovecraft is, I was like, somebody got to do a documentary. Because I was like, this had to just be the spot in Tulsa. It's probably, I want to go back. I might go back and look. I had a um, a Chitlet Circuit routing of all the black theaters that were on the circuit. I had, well, if Dreamland was a combination movie theater and live performance theater, maybe. I'm going to take a look at that. That's a good question. But I do want to point out, I want to take just a moment because I don't know how crazy next week's episode is going to be that we're going to want to talk about. But I want to point out some of, I want to point out some of the historic, some of the ways that Lovecraft, that Misha and her writers have succeeded in weaving like historical narratives that you may or may not have caught. Might just be a mention or something deeper into Lovecraft. Um, there are various uh, sites and pods that have been breaking this down weekly. There's the Safe Negro podcast that um, 
uh, <laughs> that for all nerds does. And then the Langston Project actually has a Lovecraft syllabus. They do a syllabus of each episode, which gives you backstory, which gives you relevant. I'm just thinking books, about the music. scene from The Best Man, Richard Wrong Langston Snooze. Snooze. Hill <laughs> uh, you, your mom Shout would go to, to that. Your mom would go. Shout to out that. to Shelly. <laughs> um, but yeah, they do like a really great breakdown of each episode. I mean, it has to be so time consuming, but they give you relevant like books to read, music to listen to, other movie references, other 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 scholarship that you can read um, on these things. But a couple of things I want to point out. So we talked. So we know about the Green Book reference, or everybody should at least know about the Green Book reference. But now Uncle George talks about the Negro Travel Guide. That's the Green. Um, that's basically the Green Book. And but don't watch you, bullshit ass movie. Don't watch right. It. That's what I'm gonna say. If you watched the the first episode of the of the show, you should have an understanding of why the Green Book exists, which should also help you understand why we were so mad at that fuck ass movie. Um, the second thing we gotta is, get the fuck up out of here, y'all. Let's go. <laughs> the, and then we talked about the reference to sundown towns. Um, we talked about. Poetry and speeches. So Sonia Sanchez, who is like Nikki Giovanni's equivalent um, in terms of a black poet, even though her last name is Sanchez, she gave herself that name. It's not her given name. Um, there's like the very first episode, there's Langston Hughes debating about the fact that the American dream comes at the expense of black people. You got um, Gil Scott Heron, um, Whitey's on the moon. You got, um, I mean, Cardi B. <laughs> you got Cardi B. Um, and Too I would so say go to go to um not Langston Hughes, you got Baldwin. I'm sorry, you got James Baldwin debating on the American dream, getting coming at the expense of black Americans. Um, you got and that's happening like, you know, while they're traveling to go look for this house, um, and go look for their I guess his namesake, his legacy, whatever you want to call it. Um, you got this was such great juxtaposition when Rudy turns into a white woman for the first time and she's sitting on the bench chilling, reading the paper. You have dialogue from for color girls who consider suicide when the rainbow is enough, which again, just great juxtaposition. So that's that, also the Cardi episode. There's yeah. also a Cardi yeah. episode, yes. The boat at um, yellow and money was in that episode. We got uh historic photo references, like there's a live shot that mirrors a Gorham Park shot. There's another live shot at Mirrors. Let me find the name of the picture. Give me one second. Oh, I'm feeling like you got the uh, MLK reference on the episode. We talked about that. that. The house. Yeah. Yep. Oh, so the other one. So there's Gordon Park's department store is framed and um, mirrored, I want to say in episode one. And there's another um, photo, Margaret Burke White's Kentucky Flood, where there's a, you see a line of Black people um, who are lined up at the bus stop. They're going all the way down the block. It looks like the voting lines. And they're standing in front of this billboard that's talking about, like, the privilege of America, but it's like white people in a shiny car oh, yeah. or whatever. Really yeah. Cool. Um, and then, like you said, there's the music, right? So a lot of it is modern. But when they do choose to use classic pieces, like the usage is really key. So even when Ruby is white and working at the store and is in the break room with the other girls and they're dancing to Tutti Frutti, it's not Richard's Tutti Frutti. It's one of the covers of Tutti Frutti, which went number one when Richard's didn't, which again, just like, you know, I'll play on that stuff. And then, like you said, the people, the reference to MLK when they were talking about him as Michael and him dating that white woman first. In um, Boston, and they was engaged. Yep. Yeah. And Emmett Till being sewn all through the season as Bobo, which was his name, before he leaves. Then there's and a when you going on your trip. And yeah, then seeing coming, him in the library. Then when is Bobo coming back? And then we're at his funeral. Um, reference to, I'm trying to think whoever. Who, what, which writer was staying? One of the writers was staying at the Row House. Was it Hughes? I forgot. One of the writers from the Black Arts Movement was actually, I mean, oh, at, the, at the... And they had, and they had the, um, you know, shout out to the ballroom culture in the, in, in, the, in, the, in the scene with Montrose when he finally yeah. let, let yeah. him gonna be his true self. The ballroom references. I mean, it's just, it's really kind of... 
That's it. Even like the neighborhood where Letitia move has moved to, um, in the show was in fact one of the first neighborhoods on on um in in that on that side of Chicago on, north on side. the north side that black people felt safe moving to. Um, but but it wasn't at first. Like they still they still got harassed, but it was one of the first neighborhoods, one of the first like blocks that black ended up moving on to. So like she's just been so specific with with everything she's done. Oh, and even with music in Hepolita's joint where she's um her and George are like in spacesuits examining flora and fauna. It's Sunrise. It's a it's a song by Sunrise who was like a Afrofuturist futurism pioneer. So it's like there's there's so many layers. This stuff was so thought of, you know, like really carefully. And I think that if you go back to catch it, right? Or if you take time to look at it, or if you take time to notice all the references they make, even the pickaninnies in in Bobsy and Topsy, you know, like I think that if you actually take time to to look into it, there's so much to learn there, woven into entertainment and horror and and just with great acting and great directing and it's really it's just so it's so special. It's just so well done and so special. And layered. And also, why can't I why can I find it? I'm looking for it on my phone. And uh, I also want to shout out that uh Christina, I know everybody's I know that Bill Burr got issues, but um Christina being like, Yeah, I'm gonna help you if you come volunteer to die so I can live forever is the epitome of the white woman privilege that Bill Burr talked about in his Saturday Night Live monologue. Just yep. like why. Just have fun. What you looking for? It was. I figured it out. The uh-huh. um, a subtle thing that was missing in Hippolyta's episode was Beyonce. And, no, I have talked to. I know people in this industry, and I've talked to them, and everything they've ever told me about the arts subculture mm-hmm. was examined when she was over there dancing with Josephine Baker. Okay. And I was just like the backstage part and how they was partying. And yeah. I was like, even all the way back then, I was like, this is what everyone who has ever told me that is in that culture, they have said it is just like this. And the way mm-hmm. she presented, I was like, yep. I just remember all them stories. And I was like, this was the image I've had mm-hmm. of like how they get down when the show was over. And I was just right. like, yep, they, they know this. And, and even was, with Josephine, yeah. I was I would say if you if you only know of Josephine Baker, the artist, also look into the fact that wasn't she in like the French Legion or some shit like that? Like she was an officer in the French Legion, if I'm not mistaken. And um, like Josephine was also like heavily politically active, even as in, like her ex her ex patriotism was like uh, an in and of itself activism. Um, so definitely look into that. There's just again. None of this is simple. Like no one episode is just like let me just watch this shit straight through, and it goes and take it, it goes, at face value. It goes full circle, uh, mm-hmm. especially as we record this on the day that Megan Thee Stallion released that outstanding op-ed in the New York Times yep. about black women and talking about why she does the things that she does and how she was using her voice. And it was just like there would be no Megan Thee Stallion without Josephine Baker. Like Correct. none of them happen without Joseph Josephine Vega is the original that right. bitch that broke all the rules. Who people uh, were saying, I don't know why she gotta get naked. She could keep her clothes on. That's why she, she had to go to Paris. First. Exactly. She, she is the first. So it ain't no P Valley. Yeah. <laughs> it ain't none of this. It ain't no Foxy's. It ain't no Kim's it right. ain't no hardcore cover or posters. Nah, nah, nah. Ain't no ill nana. It ain't no Trina's, nothing. City Girls, what nah, is it nah, nah. without Josephine Baker? So, yeah, I just, um, and also with Hippolyta, speaking of like how everything woven into the show is also done really well. There's been a couple of mistakes that people have been calling Misha on. Like, I think one map said, one from saying Kansas to Kentucky or something like that. And she said she didn't notice it till fans called her on it. But, she's done such a good job of planting things subtly without calling them out immediately, but referring back to them. Yeah. But I also hate when people do that. Like 
Mm-hmm. P- that's when everybody tripped up the Starbucks cup and Game of Thrones, and I was like, really, y'all? I was like, really? Really? Right. We, we, really? Like, <laughs> these two white men that gave us, I think, the second best show of all time. Y'all tripped up this damn cup. I mean, that was a pretty big mistake, though. It Ryan. was, I but, it. I, but they made it seem like it was the biggest plot hole in television right. history. Just and a it big was mistake. Like, and Just I a, went back and, and rewatched the of, and I didn't even see it. I didn't yeah, notice it I, at all either, so I saw the still. I had no idea. But what I was going to put up is, mention is that once Hippolyta's hair turned blue from being a conduit, she looks like the characters in these comic books. So, and, and there's a theory that if you remember, George said that when he went through the portal, a hooded person with a robot arm gave him the book. And it's like, is D going to lose that arm that... um. Oh. Topsy and Bopsy got to, and maybe she's gonna be that robot figure. Mopsy and Topsy, Topsy and Bopsy, Topsy whatever, and them, Pop- whatever them people's names. Shout out to them twins, but they fine. Shout out to them. So I'm very excited about the finale of next week, but also scared. And now, once we get past the finale, I can finally read the book because I hadn't done that yet. I just need another season. Like, okay, listen, I wasn't mad when I got to the end of. Washington, I wonder how they do though, because they had source material. If you have to write another season, it would have. Oof. No, 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 no. When I got Ugh. to the end of Watchmen, I was like, yeah, this is it. We don't need right. any this. I need some more of lo- like figure do it we out. Know? What if what if yeah. Christina dies next e- next episode? Then what? So, t- <laughs> take, take control of monster, right. and Tisha can't die. And they still living in the north side of Chicago. It's all true. types of stuff. They That's can true. deal with random, you know, sons of Adam just showing up in Chicago. Like, listen, wherever they need to go, HBO cut the check. <laughs> That's cut the real. Check. Cut the check. Cut the check. Um, all right. That's all I got. What else you got? Uh, the Braves are winning 6 0 right now. I can't do baseball. It's too long. But it's so long. Why do they need to be so? Those games do not need to be that long. Like anything want, where you got to break up the game and stretch in the middle of it, your game is too long. You want to? Uh, you want to take up an offer, or you want to do a benediction? I like. You know what? Why don't you do the benediction for us on this evening? I'm not. I'm not. I'm not good at benedictions because, okay. like, I don't. I don't know how to make it flowery and make it sound like you need to walk <laughs> down the middle aisle. <laughs> And throw so, your body on the altar. Because I, if I was a pastor, I'd be like, do you want to live or do you want to die? <laughs> but I mean, listen, right now, right now, though, that's actually an appropriate benediction because election day is now, what, three weeks away? We got, listen, okay, this is another conversation. Black, black Gen X men, y'all are killing hip hop and y'all are killing me with your bullshit right now and I just I just need you to focus because we got three weeks we have three weeks and I understand this idea of not giving up the black vote without um being promised something in return but here's the thing right if your house is on fire you do not first say what hotel are we going to did you call insurance and see if they're going to pay for the coverage um you do not stop and 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 lackadaisically gather up your belongings that you want to take with you and preserve. I'm, I'm trying to put your J's in a book. Uh, it, the house is on fire, motherfucker. It's an emergency. You got to go. You figure out the other shit later. And I know people say that every election year, it's like, oh, vote for the lesser of the evil. We'll figure out the other shit later. But this time, like, no, for real, it's a fucking. <laughs> emergency there, there is y'all... no but that's the thing though there is no evil in this there was no evil in 2016 okay there was no evil now if someone no, trump is evil no 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 i've been on, on, oh. on oh, okay. like, like 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 let's let's not let's get rid of that rhetoric and that narrative okay. because Fair. i'm just like fam this is a black woman who should have been the presidential nominee, if you're asking me, outright herself, and the dude who was Obama's right hand. Right. If, if you want anything close to having them two black people back in the Oval Office, I think you would want to vote for 
the person that's probably going to call him for counsel all the time. But also, but, but, but there's a lot of people who don't want anything like Obama in office. And those people actually hate the American presidency, period, which I understand because it's a flawed office. But I'm also like, the fuck, you, what the fuck do you want? Because there, there's no option available to you, even had it been Bernard. But anyway, um, my thing is, we have, we've already seen what the past four, four years have done. We have, he has packed 51 judges into every uh, circuit court, I think except 13. So like, I think 14 of 15 circuit courts, if I'm not mistaken, these are people who are going to be on the bench for at least two more generations, the majority of which do not have the experience to do so. And if, unless something miraculously stops Amy Barnett's confirmation hearings. We got Mega Karen mm -hmm. in court. Let's go see Am. The, that would have given Trump, of all people, three fucking SCOTUS seats. The last motherfucker we needed to give three also, SCOTUS seats. Also, there's a question that I don't think anyone has yet to answer for me because so much has happened. I think we stopped caring about it. So I'm going to ask what? you this. Does he have a full cabinet yet? No. Exactly. Not remotely. And he had people who've been serving in cabinet a year without being confirmed at all. Without going through Senate um, oversight at all. So, like, but yeah, you're right. Like, still, I think at best, at best, two thirds of the cabinet positions are filled. At best, it might be more like half. That man shitted on armed Everything. service members, dead and alive. On everything. It don't he even he about, like, like, this is a country where black people for, for decades have been like, I ain't going. I ain't fighting for this country. I ain't going to war. I'm not doing this. But that don't mean that we don't respect right. a lot of service men and women. Because we all have them in our family, literally. Exactly. That's what I don't think. But, that's what I don't think people understand. Every black person you know who has had more than two generations, who has at least two generations in this country, has service members in our family. All of us. All of us do, because at one point, that was also our ticket to getting homes, to getting colleges paid for. Like, my grandfather went to school after he came back from the war, you know? So it's like, we, so people seem to think it's black people versus the military. No. The, who do you think the military, what high schools do you think they go to to recruit? On my dad's side of the family, it's six boys, three girls, mm -hmm. nine of them. Four of the six men served in the military. Yeah. The oldest, my uncle, has a purple heart. The second of was my dad, he was in the Korean War. So right. it was just like, that's all I knew. So yeah. I don't even understand how you can go to disrespect them because we don't. But you know, when you have, yeah. you have a, when you have someone in the Oval Office who no one in his family has ever served. Nope. <laughs> nope. And he got five deferments. Then there you go. Five. Like even like the John McCain thing, like. Listen, we, of course we wanted John McCain to lose Obama, but like nobody had beef with John. Yeah, we weren't McCain. Like, just like nobody was mad at John McCain. We were just like, "You stupid for for picking Sarah Palin." But nobody was out here like John McCain got to catch hands. Like right. and, until twenty fifteen, till he started running. Like let's be honest, have you ever had beef with a Republican till then? No. Have I had beef with a Republican? Yes. But have I like I'm talking about like in the Republican and the Republic and members of the Republican Party where you was just like on site if you found out that somebody's a Republican, like you just want to slap the shit out of them. Like you do now. No. See my point? Not until not until Trump took off. Exactly. Yeah, you're right. And that's the other thing. It's like we it's not that people agree care to disagree. We can Yeah, it's not that we force. care that you're a black Republican. Yes. If you if you're a black Republican, if you're a white Republican, it's not that we care that you're a Republican. We care that you're a Trump supporter. Or it's not even, which is a different even thing. Even if you are a Republican who is not a supporter, it is that y'all are not doing shit to stop him. Right. That is why we are just like we done with y'all. We can't do with y'all. Like it makes me think of the scene in the Inkwell where um uh, remember Colonel Tater was a black Republican 
Uh, mm-hmm. And the dash was arguing. But, like, they dapped it up, pieced it up at the end. It was just like, that's how it was. Now, it's just like, bam. It's, it's, this is like Christian blood. <laughs> like, yeah, it's a lot. It's really, it really I'm is that real right go. now. Like, I'm straight cutting people off, blocking people. Like, it's like you, yeah, we get, nah, we can't even discuss this, fam, like you said. Um, we gotta- but on that note, I want to remind you guys to make a, make a voting plan. Uh, I think there might be a couple of states where you can still register vote. Early voting in New York, if you are here, starts October 24th. Early it voting has, in Chicago started a week and a half ago, because that's when I started early, a week and a half ago. Yeah, early voting in Georgia started this week. So, like, wherever you are, get it popping, get your plan together. If you still have a mail-in ballot in your house, find your drop-off spot. Be aware that they Make got sure it's fake, not a fake one. They got fake ones out there. Um, again, everything that the GOP accuses them of doing is because they are looking into doing it or they're doing it themselves every time. Um, projection like a mug. But uh, at this point, find a drop-off location. Go to your uh, board of lectures office, something, wherever you can go. Um, Google is free. But yeah, Google is free all the time. And all the time, Google is free. Mm-hmm. Um, on that note, we thank you as always for being with us, watching us, listening to us. You could have been watching or listening to anything in the world right now. You are with us. And we will see y'all next week. And as always, stop giving that white man y'all money. And stop putting Van Jones on your platform while you're here. <laughs> we still got to have that conversation. About all, that that. all skin folk ain't kin folk, especially when they mm-hmm. married to the other skin folk. Mm-hmm. Oh, and also... Stop acting like Russell Simmons doesn't have 20 rape allegations against him. If you, but that's another conversation. I thought it was more than okay. that. Um, huh? I thought it was more than that. I think I, it's, well. I we'll watched the documentary. Answer. He did that shit. Oh, guilty as fuck. All right. Till next week, y'all. Later. <laughs>